Damn! <laughs> all right all right what's going on there guys so we got a customer scooter in here it is a 150 cc scooter customer is complaining of hard starts in the morning once it gets going then it gets going but it's a hard crank in the morning um, and there's also a complaint of it not reaching top speed as you guys know most 150 cc gy6 whether it's chinese or real uh, average about 60 miles per hour uh, most of them actually will probably only reach about 52 to 58 miles per hour. But if, if you get lucky, you get one that's got really solid compression and a good build, they'll reach 60 miles an hour and on a downhill about 62 maybe. But uh, that's about the gist. So I think a good place to start with this first is to have a look at the CVT case, pop this off, see what's going on inside there and see where the wear lines are on the variator because that'll tell me whether the belt's starting to wear out. It'll also give me an opportunity to look at the clutch. Um, so essentially you want a belt to reach the top end of the variator, almost completely to the top. That's when you're gonna get the maximized ability out of your CVT case. So it may just have some stuck rollers, the sliders may need to be looked at. So we're gonna go ahead and take this apart. I'm going to pop the uh, variator off there. We're going to have a look at a few things, so we'll see if we can figure out the drivetrain on this first, and then we'll go from there. So let's get this started. All right, guys, I'm going to be using the electric ratchet for probably the majority of this stuff, and uh, I'm going to be putting extension on here. We're going to be starting off with 8 millimeter because that's what this requires. Brought a screwdriver in case the dust guard's never been pulled off. A lot of times the dust guard is uh, does not get pulled off on these and they're kind of hard to get off for the first time so let's go ahead and get the kickstart off <sighs> crack it loose first there we go once it's loose make less work for yourself trust me guys let's see if it just pops off there without too much struggle hey that works out cool cool we also want to remember this kickstart goes this way. Can't have it the other way because the hub is there. So that's where the clutch is. Let me put this back on. It only goes one way. Pretty hard to confuse that, you know what I mean? So let's take these off. I'm going to speed this up. We'll get this uh, CVT cover off. Have a look at the variator. All right, see if it comes off easily or if we're going to have to beat it with a wrench. Nope, looks like it might just come right off there. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted. All right, set that down here. Wow. Okay, well, he's almost reaching the top of the variator. And the belt looks like it's in pretty good shape. But look at some of these, look at some of these shavings in here. If you guys can see that there's definitely a lot of belt material in here so before i put all this back together i'm going to take my uh air compressor and blow this entire thing out i do need to remove this and what's got me a little worried is that i'm seeing fractures in here if you can see all these fracture points inside here that's really strange to me you know it's almost like it's broken or it was put on way too hard and it cracked it. That's kind of what it looks like. I'm a little skittish to take this off, but we're going to. If it falls apart, we'll just replace it and um, go from there. But it has the correct amount of belt tension. So, seems to be all right. It's not doing horrible. I can tell you the center stand isn't correct because it's, <laughs> it's leaning back way too far. But uh, that back tire should be off the ground, so there's definitely a center stand problem going on here. I'm not quite sure what that's about, but uh, this is not not up there very well. So, well, let me grab my impact wrench, and uh, we'll see if we can knock this sucker off there, because I want to have a look at these rollers. He says he's not reaching top speed, and a lot of times that's because the rollers are messed up, and they need to be uh, looked at or repositioned and replaced. So let's get inside here. All right guys, I got my Ryobi Impact and I'm gonna be using a 17 to take this off. 
And as you can see, that's what goes on there. Normally, these are a real pain in the butt to get off. Because this is so small, I don't want to risk hitting any of those fan shrouds with this. I'm going to tip it over and use the ball pin point of this. We're going to tap it a few times just to see if we can loosen it up. See if that helps. This looks like it's on there really tight. We'll find out. There she goes. Let me pull this off gently here. set that down I'm gonna look at the back side of this so yeah I'm not I'm not quite sure what those those are definitely fracture points that's interesting that this got fractured but this gives us the ability to uh, have a look at the variator where so let me set all this aside here before we go any further let's do this close that up man there's a lot of belt material in here I am I'm gonna blow all this out before we go any further so you can see where the wear line is. It's definitely not reaching the top. The top of the variator is about here. You can see that it used to reach up here, but now it's come all the way back to here. There's actually a pitted groove. I can feel the groove of where it's been riding. So you can tell it's down low and up top. So this has been riding like this for a long period of time. I hear movement in there. Let's, uh, let's pull this off and we'll have a look at the roller weights inside there. We're just gonna grab it, give a little pull here. See what's going on in the back. So there's a piece right here. Make sure it slides all the way to the back before you remove it. So you're good there. We're gonna set that aside. Now we're gonna flip this over on its back. We're gonna pull this out carefully. There's little plastic pieces around here. If you can see those little plastic pieces, you wanna kinda get them to stay on by doing it like that. Just try to be gentle. Be gentle if you can. Okay, so as I suspected, there are huge flat spots on these rollers. Some of these are very bad. That one's not too shabby. So, but he definitely has a good amount of flat spots on these rollers. I'm gonna see if I can get one close enough that you can see. So that means that these are getting stuck sometimes, and when they get stuck, they cause serious flat lines on the rollers. So that one's got a big flat spot on it. And these are very dirty, like they're just covered in in, in uh, belt material. So I think what I'm gonna do, because these don't look horrible, some of them have some little flat spots, but I think what I'm gonna do is just clean all this out and uh, put this back together. Because right now there's just tons of, of uh, belt material falling out of here. So let me go get some cleaning solution and we'll, uh, we'll pull these rollers and we'll give them a good cleaning before we slap it back together. I just have tons of dust uh, material coming off my hand, so let's go clean this thing. All right guys, so I'm gonna take all these rollers and I'm just gonna flip them down into my hand so that we can clean these off real good. And then, uh, man, there's just tons of belt material coming out of here. So we're gonna spray this real down, down with some brake cleaner and debris cleaner. But uh, I'm just gonna rub these off. You do not wanna get any oil or grease on these. You just want these to be absolutely smooth, okay? So don't don't spray anything on these rollers. Just clean them off real good with a rag. Make sure there's nothing inside of them, and then set them aside. You want these to be able to roll freely inside the variator. If they're getting stuck, then you're going to start losing speed, and you're going to start creating a lot of problems for yourself. So let's go ahead and just clean these off real good. Wipe them down. Get them as clean as I can. So, all right, set that aside. Let's knock this out. And uh, spray in here. There we go. Get that all up on the rag there. Uh, you can see how all that belt material just cleaned out of there easily. Didn't take much, so we'll go ahead and put that in there one more time. 
give it another general spray. I'm going to close my eyes because I don't want this going in my eyes. You do not want this stuff in your eyes, trust me. So, there we go. We'll tip that over and we'll rock it around a little bit. Tip that over. You can see that there's basically no more black stuff coming out of there. That's what you want. So, I used a little bit of carbon choke cleaner. It does a great job, cleans out everything really fast. Now we're just going to give it a general wipe down here before I slap it back together and pop it back on the scooter. There we go. Everything's nice and smooth now. There's nothing in there stopping these rollers from, from working really smooth. See? Doesn't take much to get them to roll now. So... Maintenance guys, scooters are all about maintenance. All right, they're all back in there. They're all rolling nice and freely. Nothing sticking. All of them are moving, it's what we want. Let's go put this back on. All right, so I am deciding to clean off the roller catch because this is also very gummy on the backside. So we're just gonna remove these plastic tabs. They don't have to go a certain way, you just pull them off. There's no right side up or upside down. They're the same on both sides. So we're gonna we're gonna clean this off because as you can see, me just wiping it, it's just gnarly. It's just gnarly dirty. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there again. Give this a few sprays. Wipe it down real quick. Get all the debris off of it. Don't put dirty parts back in if you can clean them. And then after this, we're going to go spray down the inside of the <laughs> CVT. We're going to give it a little blast. All right, that's much better. No opportunity for these rollers to catch. You can see where they settle on here now during idle. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see their idle points. So this is all very smooth now. So now we'll put these back on here. Tip this upright, put these back on. Just like that. There we go. All right, so now let's go put this back on the variator and then we're gonna clean off the entire inside of the CVT. Obviously you guys already know how to put this back together. It's really easy, just make sure it lines up with the little pieces of plastic that you put back on there and then push it down, that's it. It settles, it's done, settled. <laughs> That just goes right back on there and then you slide your little piece back in there and that's going to rest against this and then you put it all back together but first i'm going to blow i'm going to get my air compressor we're going to blow this off the clutch looks fine i don't see any issues going on with the clutch at all so i'm not even going to stress the clutch but um it's fine to clean it with uh, carbon choke cleaner because it just evaporates really quickly so we're going to go ahead and blast this with my air compressor before we slap everything back together because it's extremely dirty inside this case and it definitely needs a cleaning. So let's do that. Alrighty guys, this is pretty much as cleaned as it's gonna get. Remember when you're putting your variator back together, just squeeze it nice and tight. Pop it back on there until it goes in smooth. And then take this piece, you already know. You already know. That slides all the way until it connects to the end. And then your belt goes back over the top, just like that. And don't forget your washer goes in there goes against here make sure that you've got it lined up with the teeth all right so there's teeth in here make sure it's actually in the teeth before you put the washer or the nut on spin it on there by hand as much as you can and uh damn it <laughs> damn it get on there there we go spin it on there by hand and then of course next step requires an impact wrench if you don't have one get one Plenty, plenty tight. Check it real quick. 
let it free up the belt, then zap it one more time once it frees up the belt. There we go. It's good to go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I will say there are some pretty serious wear lines on this belt, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture while we have it up here. And let's see what this is. It's a PL, so it's a 842 by 20 by 30. 842 by 20 by 30. So 842 times signature 20 times signature 30. All right, so that's all I needed from that. And we can slap this thing back together. Trusty old electric uh, ratchet here. Just be careful putting it back on. And actually, you know what? Before I go any further, yeah, holy mackerel. Let's uh, let's clean the inside of this thing out because that is horrendous. Let's go ahead and clean this out. Give me one sec. Before we put this back on, I'm going to clean this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's a lot cleaner than it was. There was a ton of belt debris inside there, so... <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm actually going to pull the rest of this... Uh, dust guard off there. They're like, it's so pointless and do nothing <laughs> other than trap the dust. So, get rid of it. Alright, let's pop this back on there. Now the variators had a good... Had a good cleaning. There we go. All right. Make sure this is nice and straight when it's up on the kick start, on the kick stand, I should say. We got to remove this bolt to uh, get it in there. Make sure this is nice and flat. There we go. That's where that sits at. Screw that in a little bit until it makes contact. Zap her down. Give her one or two more turns. It's like that. Once again, unnecessary. So, that should solve a lot of his problems on the CBT. I will say that it needs a new belt, and we'll talk to him about that. Unfortunately, I don't have a belt that'll go on here right now, so not the exact size he needs anyways. So if we were gonna do that, we'd have to order it, but I think, I think just cleaning it will probably solve a lot of his speed problems. It looks like the very, or the rollers were getting a little stuck. So now let's work on this hard start issue. I've been letting the scooter sit for a while, hasn't crunked up. Let's see how easy it is to crank up. It's been sitting for like four hours since he dropped it off now. So this would be a good time to test it. That's why we let it sit. So see how she cranks up. So this hasn't been cranked up since he left. Let's see how easy it is to start. Been a number of hours now. I'm curious myself. I'll hold this down because he says the left brake's the only one that activates right now. I see what he's saying. So that could be one of two things. That could be fuel delivery or that could be valves. All right, uh, somebody's already been in here because all the bolts are already loose. I just had to pop the gas cap and then the whole 
top came off and clearly this has not been remounted so all this is loose. Um, I'm curious to know if the P is this disconnected or where do you run this? Oh my gosh, I need to figure out what he did with this. Alright, well that's the positive, positive current case ventilation going over there. I can see that the carb was replaced within the year. Definitely looks like a new carb. Not sure why it's so sticky or why this is moving so much though. This is very easy to push around, almost like the boot might be torn. I could be wrong, but I'll have to take a look at that. And this is also very sticky. That's because this is at the wrong angle, so this is making it very hard to turn this. It's fighting a lot because of the angle that this was put at, so that was not put on correctly. And here would be the filter. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that filter real fast. Let me uh, let's come over here. Grab one out of my box. Pop a new filter on there. Flow goes this way. You see how it's got a flow arrow? It says right there, flow goes this way. So we'll go ahead and pop that one off there. And uh, we'll put this one on and see what happens. There we go. All right. Now, let's see if that was restricting the flow. Doesn't seem to be letting much gas out, does it? And there's a bunch of chunks of crap in there. So, clearly, yeah, I had that tilted down before. I didn't want to let any out. So there's a bunch of junk and gunk inside there. You can see it. So, let's see if that helps. Let's see if that alters the way it starts now. It's going to take a minute to get fuel into the fuel filter, but it should start and run already because there's fuel in there. So let's see what it does. So, let's see if the idle is down too low. What I am going to do is grab a screwdriver and turn the idle up just a little bit. Just a tad here. When he had it running earlier, it sounded like the idle was pretty low. But we'll see here. I'm going to crank it up a few good turns. We'll get it started again. Let's see if we can set the idle on this thing. It's about where it wants to be at, right there. It's still pretty low, but it's running under its own power now. Turn it up slightly more. So the electronic enricher can't do its job if the idle's set too low. It'll still be set way too low to crank this thing up for the first time. 
So I can hear it coming into its idle now. I'm gonna unplug the electronic enricher and see what it does. So the electronic enricher is already off. If I unplugged that, it would have really messed with it a lot. I plugged it back in again. Alright guys, let's take this thing for a ride real fast. I want to see what it does now. So, it, it seems to be running pretty good right now. We should just take it for a ride, see how it does. I'm going to lock the front brake, push it off the center stand. I do feel the vibrations. There's definitely a vacuum problem, I can hear it. I can definitely hear the vacuum problem. Let's take it for a ride, see what it does. It's got a lot of power. All right, I'm just gonna cruise it for a sec, see how it does here. I don't like to jump on somebody else's scooter and not know anything about it. The back tire could definitely use some air. And if I remember, he said the front brakes are the only ones he has, so I gotta pump these. So this just requires a master cylinder replacement. So I'm noticing things right now. Somebody has disconnected the pairing system on the scooter and um, that's not good. It should be there. I mean, you can if you're gonna race these things, but I'm, I'm curious why they removed it in the first place. So I'm just kind of creeping it. Feels like there might be a bend in the back rim or it's just low on air, one or the other. Let's give her some beans. Oh, she's cutting hard. Okay. Yeah, it was cutting hard just now. It was backfiring and cutting really hard. Yeah, it's stumbling on itself horribly. All right, so probably didn't need to replace the uh, fuel filter, but we're going to anyways. There's no reason for me to keep driving this. I have a pretty good idea of what needs to be done here. Uh, I'm gonna clean the carb and then we're gonna slap it back on here. So I'm pulling the carb out We're gonna give it a cleaning because it feels like the jets are not operating properly So I can probably turn the idle back down that probably did help the idle was set really really low But right now it feels like we're having some jet problems so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the carb and we're gonna clean the carburetor on this thing before I tell them Hey, man, it, you know, you need a new carburetor. That's a hundred bucks if I put a new carb on it If I just clean it, it's only gonna be 50 bucks. I'm gonna have to get with them real quick talk about what my idea is here uh, This feels like it's coming all the way back it, it I mean, I don't hear chattery valves or anything So I think this is coming back to uh, a definite need for a carb clean. So that's what we're gonna do Let me give him a uh, let me give him a ring. I'm not going to keep pushing his scooter. The drive uh, drivetrain does feel more solid now from my first ride that I took on it. So that definitely that cleaning definitely made a big difference. But we're not going to know what kind of top speed this thing actually gets uh, until we obviously clean the carb.